This is a video for the RC Tractors website. This time I'm going to be talking about what you could possibly do uh, to make your own RC controller. Now, when I'm making uh, my RC tractors, because I have uh, an interest in electronics, I tend to put a microcontroller in them and some sort of uh, RF module, like this for example, this is an XB module. Uh, they're around thirty dollars, which is a little bit expensive, but uh, it's very easy to work with. It's kind of uh, you just plug and play. You don't have to really configure it to any great extent, so it's a very useful module. But I use something like that with a microcontroller, like an uh, Atmega three two eight P, which you get on Arduino Unos, or a PIC microcontroller. So. To communicate with that, I have decided to make myself uh, this controller box. Uh, uh, it already has uh, potentiometers for let's say, controlling speed, uh, controlling the steering, uh, maybe controlling an attachment you have connected to your RC tractor. You could also you could also use this device to control a an RC excavator that you might have made. So maybe we'll have our two tracks here on this on these two controls, and then four controls for a uh, slewing the digger left and right, and for moving the arm. Now uh, that's that's quite a simple thing to do. You just need uh, enough potentiometers. Which uh, are these devices here, and they just you, you turn them for those of you who don't know. Uh, you turn this con uh, control knob here, and um, once you've supplied uh, plus five volts and uh, zero volts to two of the wires going into it, the other wire then the voltage changes as an output, and you can read that voltage as it changes using a microcontroller. Uh, using an analog input. Now, for this controller, I have decided to mount an Arduino Uno inside it, and uh, I've done this because the Arduino is very simple to uh, to get up and running very quickly. It has uh, six analog inputs, which just happens to be exactly what I need, and it has a number of PWM outputs and uh, communications pins so it's a very useful device there I, I also divide or decided to um, mount an LCD display in my uh, controller box now the reason I've done that is I intend to add some switches here so I can navigate a menu and in that way with any luck I'll be able to control uh, we'll say, say I had two separate tractors I could just select tractor 1 on my device here, drive it to where I want it, and then without having to switch to a different controller, I could just select tractor 2 and drive away. Um, I'll have to add a couple of extra buttons and switches in into this to do that, but the Arduino also comes with uh, programming libraries so that you don't, you don't have to do any real programming yourself all you have to do is call the library and the library then tells the Arduino how to light up the LED or LCD. Okay so that's that's its functionality uh, in terms of sending signals to an already built device uh, or an already uh, built tractor or excavator or construction vehicle whatever whatever you want to make yourself but um, the other thing I intend to add to this is uh, I intend to add uh, outputs that I can plug all the servos into or I can plug motors into that way I, I can test test the tractor or or an excavator before I have the RF system built I can just plug the plug the servos and motors in here to this device control them via the controls on the, this front panel and that way I can actually test the mechanical uh, the mechanical workings of the device, because uh, if you're if you're working with your RF signals and you're not 100% confident on the 
and the programming of the device on the other end, then there might be jerking happening and uh, different different uh, aspects of that design that you don't want. Uh, another example might be that you don't have the power the circuitry for the tractor uh, perfect just yet. So that when you send a signal from uh, this device via the RF, the controller over there gets the data and it uh, moves the servo and then that drop in current causes the uh, voltage drop which causes the microcontroller to reset but you don't know that's happened because it's happened in microseconds so all you see is a jerk on your on your um, servo and you don't you don't understand what's happened you don't know where the problem is is there a problem in the wiring is there, is there interference in your system is your code wrong you don't know so the simplest thing to do is have this device able with enough power so that it can uh, easily power every servo that's connected to it, every motor it won't have any issues in that respect that way you can test the mechanicals, you know that the machine is completely 100% working before you start controlling it with your microcontroller and your own uh, programming and RF system so that's that's what I plan to do, I, I just thought I'd uh, introduce this I'm sure at a later stage I'll be able to show you it working and um, uh, I hope you've I hope you found that interesting and thanks for watching.